Okay. It's in the Zencaster. Like, it's right where we're recording oh, from. Oh, 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 okay. I see. Yeah. In that chat, we never actually see. You should need to see. I just think it's easier. I think that's a very astute, very apt, apt way to do it. I think I said all of that wrong. I think I used astute and apt incorrectly. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> that's an astute observation. Yeah, I think I analysis. used that correctly. I don't know what it means, though, but I'm pretty sure I used that correctly. Well, astute is... I don't know what the actual definition is, but I like when you're saying it's astute... Here, let's astute. just pull it up, because we have we have the technology. Astute. It's having, having or showing or showing, oh, to accurately assess. Yeah, it's, it's there... assessing the situation or people. Did I miss it, or was there, actually, into... was there no Assassin's Creed in that reveal? See, no, a lot of people was, were asking was, about yeah. that, and I don't yeah. understand it, because they're like, where's Last of Us, you know, where's Ghosts of blah 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 blah, where's Assassin's Creed, and it's like, they kinda Assassin's it, Creed, but, I think, yeah. is a PS5 exclusive, or it's coming out for PS5, like, not mm -hmm. exclusive, but it's going it's to be there. anyway, yeah. But yeah, Last of Us yeah. 2 and Ghost, it comes out in like, I think Last of Us comes out next week or this week, and Ghost comes out, mm -hmm. like, very soon, so they're not gonna fucking About put it in the PS5 reveal. Yeah. Yep, well, here we go. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode 96 of the F Word Podcast. Four more episodes left until our hiatus. Our, we don't know how long that hiatus is going to be. And already, I'm going to say, uh, I had a couple people actually message some topics. One is from Jesse. Um, yeah, big Jazzy J. Jesse had a great question, and we're going to keep that topic for next week, because this week, obviously, we're talking PS5. And anybody that hates PS5, this is not going to be the podcast for you. I've, I've put that in the disclaimer in the description for this episode. It's not going to be for you because Sony is very much up my alley. Not so much in Anthony's, but like not. Oh, OK. Hates well, it. off a common thread of the games, like I, I'm probably going to buy. The no, PS5. no, no, no. I meant just in general. Like okay, if, okay. if this was a Nintendo thing, like if this was oh, Nintendo, it'd be yeah. like anybody that doesn't like Nintendo just don't don't be on here right i'm i'm not in that i don't like the nintendo camp the camp mm -hmm. i'm just saying this is going to be a very very ps5 heavy episode and because finally it was revealed and obviously it's going to be a little bit different than the microsoft episode and i think because well a because i'm more of a playstation person but i watched the entire microsoft reveal and and overall i just think there was just more here to break down whereas the other one was just I don't know. I, I just didn't get much. But we are going to be talking about that very, very soon. So again, very, very heavy PS5 thing. But as always, I've got Anthony and Vast. Gentlemen, how you guys doing? Uh, doing pretty good. I'm almost done fucking math. So, you know, I'm just grinding out the last week, I think. Had my last quiz today. So that's it. I'm just math. That's all I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Vast? Uh, just been busy with work. Uh in some ot here and there it's hot out there but it's nice mm. can't complain so yeah get any glasses wind. of lemonade as you work what's that get any glasses of lemonade no did not oh you're not sitting on a porch and just drinking some lemonade definitely not telling the youngsters to get off your lawn get the mm. f off my lawn I feel like I'm getting into that point when it comes to certain things. I especially, I think I've calmed down on that, but I remember early, even remembering early on in our first few episodes, I would make very hard stances that was very akin to being on the porch and just telling everybody to get off my lawn quite Ooh. often. I and mean, the pre-Larson I mean, saga, that. I think so. <laughs> well, that was more just utter rage. I don't like when people just come out of nowhere and think they're the most important person in the world mm -hmm. and and take away, that's all. I don't like people taking away from things, you know, when they've only been there for two minutes. It's like, you know, yep. earn your place like everybody else has, and then we'll be fine. Yeah, like, read the room, bro. Um, pardon? Read the room, bro. <laughs> read the room. I've been That's been getting me into trouble lately at work. Oh, well, right. not really trouble. I'm not, okay, so... This is totally off topic and random, but um, 
my position isn't necessarily sales. It's more from an advisory perspective. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I assess a person's portfolio. I let them know what the good stuff and bad stuff are and ways that they can improve it. Mm-hmm. They can buy if they want. There's no commissions tied into it or anything like that. But lately, I don't know what it is. It's got, I've had some like crappy conversations where people have accused me of being a salesman when I've literally never even pitched a product. Like my managers actually record, like listens to my recorded calls and they're like, you don't ever actually pitch product, do you? I'm like, no, I hate it. Like, I don't want to do that. I want to lead them down the path, say, this is the stuff that you may need. And then if they ask me, how do I achieve that? Well, then great. Now we can start talking product. But for the most part, I'm really working on that warm up part. Mm -hmm. And at first I was a little bit better. But lately, I think with all the COVID going on, obviously talking advertising with people that are losing their shirts isn't the best thing in the world. So I brought up in a meeting, I'm like, I think we're doing the exact opposite of reading the room when we're calling these people. And I think we have to take a different approach. Mm -hmm. Anyways. So that's where this reading, reading the room, which is a mantra I like to establish, like keep, and, and I like to try to use as much as possible, is not really working in the work front. But luckily, everything's slowly opening up. So who the yeah. fuck knows? Oh, yeah. Everything is opening up. And um, I'm conflicted, to be honest. Not that I'm concerned about the COVID, because I've been, if you've listened to this episode since our first episode like of the quarantine... I've been all up and down. Yeah. Like I've been like, well, kind the of world's going to end. Us. I think so. Yeah. And and I think that's the majority for sure. Maybe because we take too much credence into the stuff that we read online. Well, honestly, I just think it started off and it was this huge threat and it probably still is, but just in our province specifically, in our city specifically, like we have, I think two people currently that are infected. So for yeah. us, it's kind of like, well, who gives a shit? We're on the States where everybody's kind of a, infected and everybody's outside like just getting infected going to beaches and mass fucking hordes so for mm-hmm. us in canada and our province and city it's kind of like whatever like we're already opening up and kind of getting ready to move on with life hopefully it stays that way and we don't fucking go backwards hmm. yeah, that's well and i think um my sister-in-law was saying that across canada all the numbers are just slowly going down and down and down i think that like, northwest not, territories haven't even had a single case like throughout the whole coronavirus that's awesome. That's yeah. really good. Um, I know that our work was at a no meeting with people because usually it's face to face interaction. And originally it wasn't even a blip on the radar. But I think in recent, because of recent events that have transpired that I've been putting together in groups to like all together, um, they're starting to realize that, oh, maybe, you know, we've flattened the curve, which, and this thing doesn't come out of nowhere. And we're actually been, living in large groups now on the streets together and so far we're lucky enough that nothing's happened and so they've actually like jumped ahead and yeah, gave yeah. us the go-ahead to start meeting with people oh nice so we'll see we'll see how that uh, rolls out it's obviously going to be like they want our cars to be fashioned with um maybe some san- like sanitized related mm-hmm. stuff having masks all of that stuff if the other person requires it like we're not quite there yet, but it's like definitely sooner because before it was like literally two a week ago or two weeks ago, it was we have no idea. There hasn't even been an inkling of that happening. So I'm, I've been about ready for a while. I know at the movie theater, like before we go into PS5 in the movie theater, I just got a call about like all the new regulations about when we open and like what we need to have. And I haven't read through the whole thing, but I know I think in the Netherlands, one of our like my theater chain open up theaters there. And they only allow 30 people per theater. And in mm-hmm. my theater, we hold, I think, around 150 per theater. So it's mm-hmm. like a major cut. Everybody needs to have masks. Uh, they're providing us with like two masks just to have and like at all times in case we forget one or whatever. Uh, we have mm-hmm. plexiglass going in, a new way to clean theaters. We have like this fog machine that we just go up and down the rows that sprays mm-hmm. out like disinfectants that we don't have to like wipe off. It just naturally does. So it's going to be pretty interesting working at a theater, just seeing, A, how dead it is, because I assume there's no movies coming out, so people aren't going to be coming, and just seeing how all these new tactics work. That's probably works in the benefit of the theater that there aren't any major releases, so people aren't going to be flooding, except for mm-hmm. Tenant. Well, That's going to be well, like... Tenant might be actually moving, because there's been rumors that it's not going to come out 
in July 15th or whatever, even though they said they okay. were committed to doing so. I think it was more they're committed to coming out in theater, but mm. I could have read that wrong. Oh, no, it was Either theater, way, you're right. No, yeah, you were right. Was it just, like, it was just committed to theater, not the date? Uh, I think it was theater that they're not going to do digital, but it's like, because right. uh, all across the states, theaters are opening up too. It's not just, like, this location and in Canada. Like, across the world, I think July is kind of where th- most theaters are opening up, so to be the only movie playing is kind of, it's a good movie too, I assume, so it's not going to be like, oh, this isn't, doesn't really seem worth it to go. But it won't matter for me. Right. I'll watch it anyway, because it's free. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Vass, what did you just send us? That thing's pretty cool. Oh, uh, there's a Game video. Game of Thrones opening of all of Europe. Oh, on bo- Bondabot, like with that's, Greece. Guess, that too? is cool. That's oh, man, that's it's, so cool. Yeah. Okay, everybody, whatever you're doing right now, go on YouTube and look up look up Bondibot, B O N D I B O T. This is so cool. So they've just taken, well, how long is it? It is, uh, oh, I keep pressing the volume. It's a two minute and 37 second video. This one on the, that you sent me was two minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's part yeah. one. Oh, shit. There's oh, one. that's so crazy. So it's showing places in Europe opening up like the ga- opening of Game of Thrones. That's crazy. Oh, that's really cool. Good find. Yeah. The internet. Well, the odd really times cool. fast okay. sends a <laughs> meme or a video that's like, oh. Nice. <laughs> Bondabot. I like it. Only 32,000 subscribers. Well, this person's getting another one. Mm-hmm. I've been on the uh, subscribe train recently. I was not doing it for a while. I'm hoping that the subscription ends up being good. Um, yeah, I've been before for the longest time, which is ironic because like on YouTube, we ask for subscriptions whenever we do like an actual video or on the show, we ask for subscriptions and I'm really bad for actually subscribing. I just search out the names and I find them and then I'm like, why the hell am I not just subscribing to this stuff? Because the whole point is to make it easier for me because it's because I'm a dumbass. Really, that's that's the <laughs> only explanation towards it. So this guy subscribed. So if he does more of these, that'd be sweet. Oh, that was so cool. Good find. Um, yeah, well, and recently with my little cigar hobby, um, I've understood two things. One, I now get what, why people collect, like Ethan, for instance, has a massive, massive, uh, collection with, mm-hmm. uh, with video games. Okay. Like, I don't know if Vass, if you've ever, I don't know if I've ever shown you a picture, but like, he is so close to having almost every single game in almost every single console up to oh, I think the N sixty four. Dude, like it is it is a legit, legit thing. And he just keeps getting them. And like I guess his what his the value of his games are now are is actually double what he ended up paying for them because he finds them. Like he'll find them on like they're, large sale they're more, or on whatever. They're more valuable as a collection than an individual game, right? So yeah, and it's crazy. And for the longest time, I'm like, wait, you're not going to play these games? What's the point? What's the point? Mm-hmm. And I haven't gotten to this point yet, but I have been. I think it's week three or so since I've started my little cigar obsession, mm-hmm. and it's actually turned into an obsession because. But I've only smoked three cigars. Okay. Mm-hmm. Three or four cigars, and I only own another like four. It's not like I'm going out and buying like crazy. I'm just diving so deep into like the brands, the labels, the the different subs- like subscription clubs. If it wasn't for my line of credit or the the little debt that I have to pay back, I would have mm-hmm. subscribed to like five different ones for them to send me. And not even so I can <laughs> smoke this stuff. It's just to co- like just to collect them would be mm-hmm. unreal. So when and you say I'm, obsessed, I'm understanding oh. it. Yeah, go ahead. Like, it's not, like, obsessed in the fact that you're just really excited about it. It's something you enjoy doing, not, like, you're obsessed with doing it, like, a nicotine addiction, right? Like, you just enjoy the cigar kind of the lifestyle. So, so it's kind of like where he just likes the idea of collecting them and having them. I know uh, Nick is big into craft beer. That's mm-hmm. another thing that kind of never really made sense to me, even though I like craft beer, but I don't like it to that extent. And he's got friends that like like research it. They know about him. They know the brewers and all that stuff. Well, now I'm like, I'm learning about a lot of uh, not obscure but lower level cigar makers in the states. Mm-hmm. 
can't seem to find one in Canada yet. Um, the history of how they started, mm-hmm. um, you know, where they, how they grow the their cigars in particular, even from like the big ones, like companies like Davidoff and Padermo and those things, like massive, massive scale, thousands and thousands of cigars on a regular basis to like the smaller ones. And it's cool because like there are more people out there that are getting involved in this world. And so it's become more artisanal. And the only reason I know that is because there's videos from like two years ago where there's people talking about how they feel there's like a change in the environment. And it's, it's legit, man. Like the amount of people that are subscribing to monthly cigar clubs and a lot of them now are even to the point where like one's called Pravada and they have just what they call farm rolled, which is essentially a cigar with no band on it. So you're not biased to the label. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, I found this real like they they go out and they hunt these really rare cigars or ones from farmers that most people may not get a chance to smoke and they put it in this in the cigar thing and when you get your pamphlet you know you get to you don't get to see who it is but you get do get a code so if you want it again you can submit the code to the website but anyways like it's it's this really cool world that I found and I'm obsessed with like learning how they make them roll them the storage of it all of that stuff and I never understood that type of hobby until recently and it has very little to do with most of the stuff that we talk about here but it is super enjoyable and that's what i mean by obsessed because again i'm not really like oh i need to get these so i can smoke them to get the nicotine or whatever Mm -hmm. i've only smoked four no it's a different experience you're just honestly that is more of a social thing it has nothing to do with the getting the nicotine fix it's completely the social aspect behind it and you're just enjoying that's it see i've never yeah. had a cigarette cigar like i had a cigarolo mm-hmm. and even then it wasn't okay. like a nicotine thing where like if you hit a vape like oh you feel a nicotine buzz like it was just kind of like the action of inhaling the smoke and that was it or like inhaling elk like not inhaling through your lungs not but like in, just into your lungs into like your a mouth. Yeah. yeah um don't don't do the cigarette thing i did it for no cigarettes i can't stand like just the smell 10. of it like I cannot do it. Yeah. I think uh I think since I yeah, I quit just over the ten year mark. Because I would say about November of twenty nineteen or twenty two thousand nine, sorry, was when I officially started buying packs. Mm-hmm. And uh yeah, it is a especially when you look at how much money, holy shit, the amount of money. That's the other thing with this cigar thing. Cigars aren't cheap either. But at least at least one cigar you can get like I've, I've the ones that I've smoked have all been t- under ten dollars and they're good like hour hour twenty minute cigars all of them so far and they've just been like a nice little freeze frame in time. Whereas a cigarette is just like you're actually trying to smoke it faster than it's burning because it's paper. Whereas a cigar it actually burns out and then you have to relight it. It's a totally different experience. I just wish, at least where we are here, there was more of a of a culture around it because i can't seem to find one um Mm -hmm. even in like reddits around the city and stuff and i know that it's impossible to open up a cigar club in canada and so a lot of people are going online and stuff so i don't know it's it's really interesting i'm trying to think on how how, why we got onto this topic because i feel like there was a reason but I don't remember. I, who knows? I think I started with Ethan <laughs> when I came because I had to come back. I, I remember you were talking yeah. about Ethan when I left, and then they moved to cigars when collections, I got back. Maybe. The the which or, one? Sorry. Collections, maybe. Maybe collections, but there was a reason for that. Anyways, um, oh, the subscriptions. I think because I started subscribing to a lot of the, like cool like cigar Instagrams and 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 YouTube channels and all that. Yeah, yeah. And maybe that was it. I don't know. Um. Before we again, we're gonna get on the PS5 pretty quick here. Did you see the thing where apparently HBO Max is pulling all their DC stuff? Yeah, what's that, that about? Uh, I it heard it had to do sense. something with actual licenses, and they're like okay. just revoking it for now. But it'll be back. I'm pretty sure someone said. Oh. That seems aw- That seems weird considering they just did this big deal for the Snyder Cut, and then it's like two weeks later, three weeks later, however long it was, and it's like, oh yeah, no, we're taking all the DC stuff out of hbo max it's mm-hmm. like oh my god just... it wasn't even just the dcu it was like the dark knight trilogy and like oh shit was Small it uh, looks like was it a license with other places like it's let's say netflix's turn and the only reason i say this because last night i was like oh batman begins is on and i started watching batman begins 
So I'm reading this article from IGN, and I read this earlier too, I remember. Uh, I think what HBO wants to do is kind of have like their service be like a theater. So they have rotations of movies and shows, not just the same movie and show constantly, like kind of how Netflix does, and they just keep adding and adding and adding. So it's just like Mm -hmm. a huge catalog of shit you have to watch. So they said starting July 1st, uh, DC movies will be unavailable to watch, but they're going to keep doing rotations where they add more DC movies in like August. Or a new, okay. they have a new batch coming in July, and then another batch coming in August. So okay. whether that means they're going to stay or they're going to continue just to rotate like all movies or whatever, I don't think that's a. I don't really know. I don't think that's a kind of. I don't. I don't fuck with that. You know, I feel like just have the movie on the platform, especially DC ones, because those are just movies you can watch at any time. Well, I, I just think it's um, like you can begin i guess your small little road up your way to the snyder cut maybe mm-hmm. i mean it's not even nearly the like the same thing as um as endgame yeah. or infinity yeah. war the well, mcu is but i mean at least snyder cut yeah i guess i mean but then you could throw in, yeah well i would i would definitely include wonder woman um because that's in my opinion that's the best of the bunch like if you're looking at DCEU, Wonder Woman stands head above, like above, shoulders above all the other ones. That's my thoughts. No, I, it's and true. I, and like I even like as a Man BBS fanboy, it is. Wonder Woman is the best movie in the DCEU. It's not my favorite, but it is well, the and, best. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, the thing is, I would also put Wonder Woman as if you were to take the DC movies and the MCU movies. Like I put Wonder Woman very high above like i'll put it over guardians 2 i'll put it over throw the dark world iron man 2 i'll put it over captain marvel of course obviously anything is better than that um i would even i would put it up there with like black panther you know like a doctor strange like something that you just watch it and you're just like you just get so into it and it's like not the very very best it's and it's not even close to the 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 bottom it's in that like eight out of ten range yeah do you know what i mean does that make sense I agree because I personally thought it was a really good movie. I didn't think it was like Captain Marvel in the sense that the feminism seemed really pushed and it kind of portrayed, you know, Captain Marvel as a victim to males and like all men are evil. Mm -hmm. Because like in Wonder Woman, you know, she beat the shit out of guys. And like it was kind of that theme where like she's a woman beating the shit out of a guy. But it wasn't like, okay, that's unrealistic. Like she's a she's a fucking demigod. She's known to be a powerhouse. And but even her growing up in Themyscira was all about you need to unleash your own potential because all of the the war the Amazonians and warriors around you have done that. Like mm-hmm. n- you need to realize that there is nothing stopping you. It's not anybody else putting you down. It's your own potential and your own like you have it in you. You just have to find it. And that yeah. was I felt was like even for me as a guy, I thought that was just a great narrative to go with. Not. Oh, everyone's beating you down. Like you're on an island of females. So what's your excuse? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Very good point. Yeah, that's what uh, that that's why if anyone compares the two, I don't think there's a comparison at all. Like no. that one, one, one just I don't I don't know what how to explain it, but one is just so much far above than the other in so many of, like, different ways. So many of my coworkers just hate the DC movies. Like not even not even DCEU. DC in general, like so many of them hate DC. The Dark Knight trilogy, they don't fucking like. They don't think it's great. They hate the Raimi trilogy. They hate Wonder Woman because we were doing a tier list and they tried putting Wonder Woman like super low. And I'm like, what are you talking about? It's just, it's so fucking dumb. It doesn't make sense. You can hate uh, the company or you can hate the company, but like their movies are fucking good. They have a couple that have been shit in the past like recent years, but Dark Knight trilogy. Wonder Woman, the Superman movies, like the original ones, Batman with Jack Nicholson, like they have so many good fucking movies. And Raimi mm-hmm. Trilogy is just in there because it's uh, fucking goat. Raimi Trilogy is a goat. Vass, you have anything? You're quiet. Any thoughts? No, I, I agree with that. <laughs> I <laughs> concur. <laughs> that's, and that's Vass's take. You're like Ollie from Family Guy. Hey, Ollie, how's the weather? It's going to rain. All right. Thanks, Ollie. <laughs> All right, exactly. thanks, Ali. Well, he's gonna have some uh, okay. fucking input for this PS5 X versus X, like PS5 from an Xbox user perspective. So, sure, okay. uh, well, the question is, are we ready? Yes, I think so. Are we ready to talk about this? Okay, 
Have you gentlemen seen the whole thing? I know, Anthony, you only saw the one half. Uh, I saw and... the rest of the trailers. Yeah. I didn't watch hey, the whole the, fucking like thing, the though. I just watched part? the trailers. Yeah. Okay. Vass? I saw it all. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. First of all, do we go with the event itself? Do we talk trailers? Do we talk ha- um, hardware first? Where I want I want you guys to decide how we start this thing. Well, since hardware was the last thing they showed, and arguably kind of a good way to wrap up the conversation, because if we start with games, it's kind of just going to be a never-ending list of things we talk mm-hmm. about. But if we like lead to the hardware, it's kind of that's the ending point where we talk about overall thoughts, in my mind. Okay. Yeah, I'm good with so that we're too. starting with the hardware. Is that what I'm? Or going starting on? with games, leading games. to hardware. Or we're starting yeah. at games. Okay. I just thought when you said that it could go on and on and on, we might lose the hardware if we go into games first. Nope, yeah. that sounds good. Bass, you're good with that. <laughs> I, I I thank you. Yeah, he agreed. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> what did you say? What was your thing? Yeah, he agreed yeah, before yeah. you like came yeah, in with the rebuttal. Okay. <laughs> it's all good. Um. Let's get into the thing. Now, I watched the whole event start to finish. Anthony, you said you just saw the trailers. And Vass, you saw the whole event or just the trailers? I saw the event. I saw the last half of the event, but just today I watched the rest of the trailers. The event is essentially like the some of the developers talking and stuff like that. Correct? Is that what you're yeah, yeah, literally that, that oh, whole okay. hour and so yeah, many yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. like video well, of it. Like I've yeah. got it right now. And, the event is the trailers, um, as far as I'm concerned. So yeah, for sure. Like, okay. uh, um, yeah. Okay. So then I guess we'll start with the games. Then, um, now there was Anthony. You had talk to somebody about how you guys didn't feel it was very next gen now what part of it was didn't feel very next gen for you because i thought that i saw i saw that i'm like okay we have i have to bring this up which part of it wasn't next gen about this so overall the games they showed and keep in mind at the time i was writing that comment i hadn't i didn't even know spider-man was announced i thought because I was in a Discord watching it live, like the sl- second half, and I thought they were joking, saying there's a new Spider-Man announced, because I assumed that'd be like one of the last things they'd announce, because it's probably the hypest fucking one. Mm. Uh, but just looking, I was looking at a lot of the indie games at the time of like writing that and kind of going off with it. So a lot of these indie games I was looking at, like that's cool, but it looks like it, it that looks like a game like Bug Snacks, for example, is one I'm looking at right now. That was one I'm like, mm-hmm. that looks like a cool game, but that looks like something I'd play on the Switch. Like a yeah, lot of these like games... It wouldn't even be for you. Yeah, and like in the second half of the trailer or whatever, the event, almost all of those games just looked like they'd fit right on the Switch. Like there were okay, some that looked yeah. really good and really nice, but other than that, mm-hmm. like they didn't really look anything crazy. Like there wasn't any oh, this is super next-gen, but, you know, the console isn't done yet. The graphics aren't done. The graphics did look super good, but there's nothing, like, crazy. Mm. So what were you expecting? Like, what what would have been crazy? Like, because the thing is, with the next-gen, the whole idea with with the, the next-gen thing is just its power, how fast it's going to be. And I, I one person had mentioned this, and I thought it was really cool how they you don't have to compromise between the art and the technological ability so yeah. in terms of next gen because i don't know if we like our last episode or not last episode but episode 93 was called next gen and this is just next gen part two because i'm not feeling too inspired right now in terms of finding a really interesting co- uh, title um what part of it would have been next gen and then bass you can jump in jump in here too like what mm-hmm. would have what what does gen next gen mean to you guys so in ter- I just think of like accessories and shit. So things that did look like in terms of games, nothing really looked next gen. But not to like jump past them, like with the console, the fact that there is a discless version of the console, super next gen. The fact that they added these little trinkets like having a media player, so like when you watch Netflix, you don't have to use the fucking retarded controller or not retarded, but the stupid controller, and uh, fucking fumble with it all the time because it's such a pain in the ass to skip forward or skip, you know, do whatever you want to do. The fact that they add little stuff like that is next gen in my mind. But overall, just the games kind of seem like a lot of them you just play on the PlayStation 4 and there's no reason to really go forward. Interesting. You think, okay, Vass? Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. 
where to go from here but like i mean the the only the the next gen that we saw and what we discussed the last time was when they revealed their end their unre- their engine that they were playing off of right and that's yeah. at max capacity of what that console could possibly do now definitely a lot of those games won't show that full potential some games were specifically developed for the platform of the ps5 now i would say there's very few uh games on this list that actually visually could probably fully take in what the ps5 could do like it's not all of them to me a lot of them look very like the ones that are kind of kiddish games to be honest like a lot of them didn't really jump out to me like i could care less for a good chunk of those but i'll mention like project athia probably had the best visuals out of all of them i would say personally for me just with how everything was displayed and that kind of stuff and like again you can't you can't really give it just to say this is next gen when you're watching it on current gen items. Like you need the PS5 with a 4K TV or OLED and all that jazz. So that's when you'll fully actually experience the next gen feel. You can't give it credit on just these uh, trailers alone for sure. But if you had to give it credit to anything, I would say like some of them have that that graphic look that I think will scream next gen again it's all in the gameplay it's all in the um, how seamless you know loading screens and you know the again we'll get into the console later and what it looks like but basically how the games function on this machine and then also the connectivity you have from the controller to everything else that's was what next gen will really kind of show so right now like it doesn't yes it's not necessarily to say everything was meant to show you the next gen this is just like these is this is what's already in development specifically because of the PS5 and some of its Xbox because not all of these are are these all PS5 exclusive or not necessarily no. okay no, the, not the all of them anyway are gonna be, I think the majority of them work there's a good chunk yeah Spider Man probably Grand Turismo is. yeah and then a few other ones but maybe not every well most of those indies most of those indies are third party yeah developers indies are, probably yeah, are so, like, Roger and yeah, or like Bethesda. GTA Five had two games is for a bit. There. I heard. Oh yeah, like a, GTA Five happened, is uh... going to be for the online part when you get the PS Five, and that's mm-hmm. why, like, which was an interesting way to start it off. I thought it was super interesting for them to start it off and also be like, "Hey, you get a million bucks every month until it comes out." Like that was, that seems that odd. Ports right over. Yeah, I, that seemed odd at first, but then I was like, "Oh, okay, I like it. That's mm-hmm. fine." Like I, I haven't played GTA Five online for the longest time, but. Yeah. I'm part of me is thinking I'm like it would look dope as fuck on a PS5. Mm-hmm. Uh, one more thing I want to add, just uh, piggy piggybacking off of Vasily, is that he mentioned a good portion. Like we talked about Unreal Engine last time, and to me mm-hmm. that looked next gen. So I guess like yeah. in the back of my mind, I came to this event expecting like that was kind of the the peak <laughs> for me because I saw that like that's what I thought next gen was, and yeah. then I see like five indie games back to back for this PS you know five event, and it's like. Well, what the fuck am I looking at? Like, what did I see last week compared to like, yeah, you know, your expectation was a already fucking knockoff <laughs> Animal Crossing on the PlayStation. <laughs> so, yeah. was that which which of these games actually stood up for you guys then, like overall? Oh, so obviously Spider Man, that's what I'm most excited about uh, in terms of like Horizon looked pretty cool. Uh, Resident Evil looked pretty good. I'm not gonna buy it though because I don't fuck with those kind of games. Demon <laughs> Souls. Deathloop was actually just a fun game. Like that didn't have to look amazing because it's kind of a arcade game, but it just looks really fun. Hitman Three actually looked super good. I don't know if that was cinematic or if it was gameplay, but Hitman Three looked like that had me stunned when I saw it. Yeah, and I think that's really the ones that kind of took me away that I remember, like being like, "Oh, that looks good." Ghostwire yeah. Tokyo was the last one actually. That one looked pretty cool with Slenderman. That one mm-hmm. surprised me though because. When it was, was like, and I, and there was a couple other publications that were commenting on it, and I was like, okay, it's not just me. When it first got released, I was actually super excited about it because it came out the same E3 of uh, Ghost of Tsushima. Oh, and no. I was like, okay, this looks awesome. And I thought it was going to be a third world supernatural exploration in Tokyo, but it ends up being this like first person supernatural weird kind of thing. And so what I ended up showing, like the gameplay that they showed, I was just like, this is so different 
than what I thought it was going to be. Like, it's not even close to what I thought the game was going to look like or be. I still thought it was cool, but that one threw me for a loop. Well, there is a... I'm pretty sure this game... Like, I don't like to say it's a ripoff or knockoff, but a lot of people had the same vibes as Dishonored when it came out. It like, looks exactly the same kind of play style. I agree uh, with that, yeah. It's, I don't, I wouldn't play Dishonored, but it's like you're an assassin who could like have all mm-hmm. these supernatural abilities, like possessor wraps and shit, and it looks exactly the same yeah. kind of style game. It's because you can me, see your hands. That's probably the biggest one. I guess so, yeah. See, that, that's where um, Deathloop mm-hmm. uh, was for me because I've played Dishonored. And so when I, I didn't play the second one, but I did play the first one. I loved it. And and for a guy that's not really first person. And so Deathloop was like, holy crap, this game is super cool. And oh, the yeah. first thing I wrote down was Dishonored Style, and I loved it. It looked so good. And I got a cool feel thing. of Duke Nukem. Sorry to cut you off. I got a feel of Duke Nukem for whatever oh. reason. <laughs> for Deathloop. Yeah, I don't know Duke why. Nukem 3D? Yep. <laughs> Or even though Come get some. something about it had that Duke Nukem or feel to it. So Yeah, um I could see that for sure. Duke Nukem 3D was still like it's still one of those like dope as fuck games. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, and the cool thing is, and I don't I don't like someone had mentioned this, I believe it was I it was on um IGN. They were saying like I the guy said, I feel like there's more to this game than what they showed in the sense of how the rival assassin is gonna play into it. And oh, yeah. So there might be some real time multiplayer happening. Mm-hmm. I'd hope there's either that or co op or something like that. Well, it's two rival assassins assassins stuck in a loop while you're trying to get rid of the eight people that mm-hmm. you need, right? But you keep dying coming back. And actually, that's it's, there's two games that had that that feel, and it was Death Loop, and I believe it was Project Athia, which that's the one with the, Is that the um, space one. Oh, no, it's Pragmata. Sp- was that Pragmata? That's a space one I was talking about. You, it could be something else. Um, Pragmata well, was like is, Death Stranding, is the, though. There is the into. other... Sorry. Okay. No, no, no. There is the other one, though, that... Um, there's two of them that was in mm. space. One of them with a female lead. I think she was Irish, too. Someone said that she was Irish. I think and that's like, Horizon, isn't it? No, no. That's... Uh, well, that's Aloy. I mean, I guess she could be a little bit Irish. But this other one is like... She's literally stuck in space. And she keeps dying and having to redo it. And part of the world is becoming the world is becoming more and more part of her i'm pretty sure that's project athia hmm. or no i don't know someone's going to be listening is and being. i'm watching the a trailer old. and she's just like walking in the woods right now i think uh supernatural something what the heck oh oh here it is here it is where is it oh for fuck's sakes it's not project athia it starts with an r, r. returnal returnal that's the one Oh, or she's in a spacesuit. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, there it is. Returnal. I had it stuck in between Sackboy and the Robot World game Stray with the cat. Yeah. Yeah, apparently that one's been released for a while. But Returnal looked really cool, and it's got that Deathloop vibe, or they both have that, uh, I guess, Edge of Tomorrow vibe, mm-hmm. where you just Returnal die and you come has, back like, again. super nice graphics, too. This, I was not paying attention yeah. to this one. This one is, I'm like, graphics are wild. It looks super hyper-realistic. It looks awesome. Um, Vass, which one's stuck out to you? Um, Project Athia. I already mentioned that one really stuck out for me just for the like the cinematic alone, how everything, the world felt and stuff like that. I'd be interested to see a little bit more. Uh, Godfall was actually pretty interesting. Like, when you see if some of the ones that they portrayed, like, again, they were all kid kind of games, like, not really my style. And I'm like, but Godfall came around, and that one was like, you know what? That's kind of my alley. I like that kind of feel and stuff like that. And could have an interesting story behind it. Who knows? So definitely those. The Spider-Man, Miles Morales. I haven't played the current one, but I think they're doubling down on how well uh, Into the Spider-Verse did. So definitely bringing in the Miles Morales storyline into its own game is pretty huge. And first time they haven't done a Peter Parker one, which is huge for them. Play, so, yeah, yeah, you, uh, you you haven't played the PS4 one yet. I have not. No. Okay, yeah. Then, uh, unfortunately, you're it, late it, to it the game. Ties in. <laughs> not really. Yeah. I mean, honestly, the game takes like two days to beat. Yeah. No, well, I mean, unless you're like spending hours swinging around like I do. Okay. Just put on some MCU music and just go around fighting people. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, act, so Godfall is one I was excited for when it was first released because it looks dope as hell. Mm-hmm. And now they actually show the gameplay, and it's like 
A Devil May Cry, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and I wrote here God of War mix. It's like all three of those games kind of together because Devil May Cry has that cool kind of animated style of fighting in a way, but AC's got a lot of those combo moves that they introduced in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which I'm 50-50 on Assassin's Creed Odyssey, but then God of War had like the shield part of it where the shield was like popping up and then some of the evade moves only because I started replaying God of War. <laughs> nice. And so uh, Godfall is definitely one on my radar. Yeah. And then Horizon for sure. I haven't played the first one, but oh, so uh, good. I want to I wanna get into that. And this one looks even just as good. So, yeah. so Horizon Zero Dawn, the first one, is one of those games that like, if you have a PlayStation and you haven't played it, then you haven't played a PlayStation yet properly. <laughs> it is like... <laughs> You have to. It's one of those games. It's like I put it up there with with Spider Man, with Uncharted. Like Ethan's just playing Uncharted right now, yeah. And um, he just started on Drake's Fortune, and he's moving up. I fin- I'm finishing up Thief's End, but there are some games in the PlayStation catalog that you have not played a PlayStation until you have played those games. Yeah. And Horizon is 100 percent one of them. It is a wonderful game. Yeah. Anthony, you seem to disagree. Oh uh, no, not that. I just haven't played Horizon, and I just I oh, don't know. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not bashing it. Like I'm sure it's good. It's just one of those things where it's like, I just don't really care to like play it. I don't know what it is. I just like it doesn't interest me at all. Well, that's because it's not all colorful and cartoony that you can just jump around nimbly bimbly and do nothing about like your uh, wonderful Nintendo. I do games. like those arcade games though. Like sue me. I was gonna say there's that one really weird arcade game. It was super, like, I'm trying to find the name of it. It was for the PS5. Oddworld dis- Soulstorm. And it's like a platformer. Okay. And it's like with those mm-hmm. weird fucking aliens. Oh, and yes. I have that like, written that down. Looks that fun. looks really like, good. It looks fun. I'm not going to lie. That one looks I, really great. Like, I, as I was watching, I'm like, this looks super stupid. But as it kept going and I saw more platforming, I'm like, oh, this kind of looks fun. Like, I'd, I can see myself having fun playing this. And it seems like for that one in particular, it's like, oh, it's not just a side to side platformer, not just following the camera, but it moves laterally. Like it moves on so many different dimensions along the screen. Like I just, I was looking at it. I'm like, this doesn't look like a platformer, which is probably a good thing because yeah. it kind of, it, it's taking the platformer and just making it that much better. It's like, it's literally exactly that. And it has like such nice graphics, like destructible environments. Mm, just, mm-hmm. it looks nice i might if it's if it's if it's 90 dollars or 80 dollars i probably won't buy it but if it's you know 40 or something like that i'd probably pick it up see that's the interesting thing about the miles morales game so i love that they started they opened up with it and it, it also is like so they whatever they they postponed it because of uh of the events that were going on last week and i thought it was a very very intelligent move to put Spider-Man Miles Morales front and center mm-hmm. uh, of this one. Now, they had the Grand Theft Auto beforehand, and they kind of had like the, the montage, which I love the fact that they had an Uncharted 4 quote because I was like, oh, I'm literally playing the game that they're quoting right now back to back. So the first words you hear in the event are, are as a quote from the Uncharted brothers, like from, uh, from both mm-hmm. of them, and then yeah. the end, the same kind of thing. And I thought that was like dope as hell. I really hope there's um, a new Uncharted and coming. And the fact that Honestly, I don't know, man, because like the fourth one did such a beautiful, like it, it closed off the Nathan Drake story so beautifully, but it did open up the idea of like the daughter spoilers, but the game's been out for a while. Uh, the daughter. Right. So there's something there and where Nathan could play the Sully role, which mm-hmm. I think would be really, really cool. Um, and so I, I don't know. I think that'd be I think that's the only way they would do it. But I don't think we'll ever. I don't know if we're going to see a Nathan Drake and have it make sense. But at the same time, if it does come out, I don't think I'd care if it makes sense or not. No. It'd be fun to um, play. Yeah. And I liked how they showed... See, you said in that thing where they didn't show off a lot of gameplay, there was a lot of gameplay in this rev- in these reveals. There was a ton of gameplay. I've written down the sections that had gameplay, and it's almost every game. Well, it's like, like very small every... gameplay, though. It's not like actual, you know, in depth where it's like ten minutes of you just playing. It's kind of just like little, gla- like in Spider Man, the Miles Morales. It's, one, it's, it's like... like him swinging for a bit. Right. It's him swinging. Then they show the suit that changes transparency. Then it shows some moves running up a building. Like this is 
this is what we would expect from E3. Microsoft, for instance, didn't show pretty much any gameplay whatsoever. And the Microsoft event just looked like they were just setting up the trailer for Assassin's Creed Valhalla the whole time. And I heard other people echo that. I'm like, yep. And it just didn't feel like you got anything out of it. Mm -hmm. This felt like an event. This felt like this is like a, a, the closest thing to an E3 that we could have gotten. And all of these showed gameplay, which at this point of the year with a console that we haven't even seen yet, there was a lot of gameplay to showcase some shit. Like I mentioned games that you have to play if you're in PlayStation. Ratchet and Clank is another one. Mm -hmm. and, coming out too, which is pretty cool. Well, no, that's the one that's the, that, that they showcased. And they showcased probably three, four minutes of gameplay for that. Yeah. And it was unreal. Like, I haven't played a Ratchet and Clank, Clank game in a while. It looks great. I don't think I've ever played one myself, but he has a oh, game which man. I really like. Is that he has fur? Like I've never played Ratchet and Clank, but like it's kind of like that Nintendo quality where you can mm -hmm. see like the actual fur hair on. I think it's Ratchet's. Ratchet's yeah, a, that's not like, a Nintendo animal. quality. That's well, just no, because like in all quality. of their like, you can see Mario's individual mustache. Like that's kind of like a meme. In the yeah, Nintendo that was done world. before Mario. Okay, came out. okay, buddy. Okay, Nintendo. <laughs> I want to pull up a render right now. It's I'm not pull just like render, saying this. Pull, Pull up a render of all the stuff pre Mario because the gameplay on this one was great and they've had effects like this before. Before Mario, Mario came out first. you play you play one Mario game on the Switch and you think that they've just coined the market on graphics. Yeah, see this is In terms this of is why you and your little the, no dude you have, to look, you have to look at everything. You don't have a Switch. You don't know though. You don't know I've what you're seen... arguing. I've seen games on the Switch. I've seen. Oh my God! I've, I've seen look at this play. render. This is from the game. I will show you what I'm talking. I'm not saying it's the godsend, but in terms of, I'm telling you, I've fiber, seen it. I've already seen it in better games. <laughs> and Ratchet and Clank showed so much gameplay. Not only that, they showed the lo no loading screens. That was the biggest thing. They showed the dimensions of like the way that the camera was moving within the gameplay. Um, how they were going from different dimensions with different backgrounds seamlessly, which I think that was like a really smart thing to do. Uh, and then the other one I thought was was really good, which I'm probably not going to play it. I've only played it once or twice, but Gran Turismo Seven. Hmm. That was yeah. that was a really really good showcase, like the trailer and the gameplay. Yeah. And specifically looking at the lighting effects and the reflections. Like the, the 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 reflections off the helmets, off the cars, and even down to like the textures on the gloves. I don't know if you noticed that vast, but like the textures on the gloves. Yeah. And all like look crazy, good. right? Oh yeah. And see, I'm not usually a fan of the simulation racing games. I like the arcade style better. It's just if I had a nice like steering wheel rig, I probably would jump mm. into it. Anthony, but, if this is your level, if if the hairs on Mario right now is your level of next gen, <laughs> your bar is really low. That is, you don't understand. So, what are you comparing yeah, this to dude, right I now? Tell me right now. What are you comparing this image to? Uh, what are you, the what are you, Witcher, the Witcher. Yeah, that's 3? Cap. Un, I compared it to Uncharted? Ratchet and Clank, and you were comparing Uncharted? it to The Witcher Every, Three. Take your um, hat off yeah, right uh, now. You are capping too hard. No, I'm this. capping properly. You can't say that, oh, look at this, when we've already seen it before in older games and done better. You can't. I don't care what you're comparing. The fact is, you're comparing strands of hair on Mario. That's great. The problem is, it's not as exciting because I've seen strands of hair on other characters in older iterations of games. So, okay, no, you lose. No, you I don't lose. think so. Okay, so you just totally before we get lose. back on track, it's like you saying, wow. This movie looks really good. Like, for this animated movie, it looks great. Well, you know, I saw a live-action movie that looks way fucking better. It's in full HD. I saw it full HD. It's way better. So your comparison is not full. I compared it specifically to a cartoon game. And you're comparing it to The Witcher. Yeah. It's an older game. With yeah, but your comparison graphics. and argument is invalid because it's not even on the table as an argument. Yours is invalid because no, you're saying that it was the best stuff ever. You're not. You weren't comparing. You were just saying it was the I best. I said, one. and I. And you're quote. also comparing Mario to Ratchet and Clank for the PS5 that was rendered in a beta, which was still better. But I didn't even but bash obviously. Ratchet and Clank. I said, "Whoa, this is really good." It reminds me of Mario Odyssey's render. 
and yeah, you but, took Breath it as the, the fucking war. To, like I declared war against the PS5 all the time. Whenever I bring up the Switch, that's because you always, always bring up the Switch. Because it's a good console. Yeah, it's a it's an okay console. Yeah, that I don't have. Fuck back on track. Whatever. I'll take the L here. <laughs> you didn't take. Yeah, you did. Okay, good. As long as you acknowledge that. So Gran Turismo, good lighting effects. It was mm-hmm. cool to have it back. Vass, you were just saying not big into the simulators, right? Yeah, I never really got it. I played them before, and actually, this they pretty much use the same music from uh, the original that I what the heck that I played Gran Turismo three or four. I think that's the last one I actually played, and the home screen music's kind of the same. So that kind of brought me back. But other than that, yeah, I never really got into the simulation style. I always like the arcade. Anthony, are you a racing guy? Uh no, oh, I yeah. do not care like at all. There's a racing game I do like. I won't say it for obvious reasons. Which one, but, Rocket League? No, I just don't want to mention what's, it. What's it called, Mario Kart? It might be called Mario Kart. I'm just fucking with you, but it is Mario Kart. Mario I don't Kart's know. Great. I just don't, like, it looks really good, though. I'm not going to, I just don't, I never really liked the actual, like, in per- first person racing games. I'm, I don't know if you can go in third person, but I just always get too screwed up going too fast and I just can't control it. And I always just can't play these actual super realistic racing games. Yeah, for me, it's like sports games. I just, mm. I'm terrible at them. Yeah, no, I just don't and find ever, it enjoyable. And, yeah, I, I like, I, the last football game I played was NFL Street, oh, which was God. awesome and hilarious and unrealistic, but it was fun mm. as hell, and I was real good at it. And then someone was like, oh, let's play Madden. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> Whenever you face a friend good. who's just good at Madden or FIFA or whatever fucking sports game, it's just not yeah. fun. Well, the irony of what I just said now is that I'm good at the jokey sports games, which is like you being like, I like the games and Nintendo first. And I'm like, no, The Witcher 3 or anything like that, which is like the super serious RPG games. But for <laughs> me, it's like the opposite when it comes to sports games. Not fair. But like, it's just for the arcade ones are just easier to be better at because it's not like you need to know all of these super big tricks and like the stats matter what player you're using, what team you're using. It's like, no, I'm just going to throw on this cart i like in mario kart and just go for it and it's just like okay you can be good you can suck it just depends on your actual level did i mentioned rocket league did you guys get a so for that destruction all-stars did it feel like rocket league and fortnite had a baby and they came out with destruction all-stars yeah Yeah. (laughs) because i haven't played rocket league but i have played fortnite like i had a brief i think two month Mm -hmm. stint playing i think that was when like the end game or infinity war thing was out was that it? I think it was around oh. that time. Oh, yeah, because we did a couple of Twitch things, and you guys mm-hmm. were laughing at me because I didn't know what to do. Oh, man, those were so funny because I had no idea what the fuck was going yeah, on. Yeah, you were just blasting. I remember, like, blasting the MCU soundtrack as you we were going <laughs> to battle. <laughs> yeah, that's usually what I end up doing. Although, for Assassin's Creed Origins, I kept playing the Gladiator soundtrack, which which <laughs> worked. And it's, it's super funny because I'm not, I don't want to diss Hans Zimmer at all, but it seemed like he borrowed a lot of the gladiator soundtrack for pirates of the caribbean sure like those did. two soundtracks sound very very similar um ember lab kenna okay i made a i put exclamation marks around this kenna bridge of spirits i thought this game was the closest to the unreal engine trailer game that we've got in terms of like it still had that animated look but technically it looked stunning. Mm. And for some reason, Kenna Bridge of Spirits was just like, oh, like this is exactly, almost exactly like it. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you guys had that same vibe. I'm watching it again right now as we go, and I think the biggest like thing to add to that is just the actual lighting, the like the shading, and they actually have like dirt on the face. Like it looks really clean and not just kind of like, again, oh, yeah, like I'm watching gameplay now too. Like it actually looks good in game, not just cinematic. Like, it's not yeah, like one of those bug so snacks good. ones where it's like, mm-hmm. this is just, you know, a fucking indie game I can play on my PlayStation 4 right now. It's like, this is really nice. Damn. See, mm-hmm. and, and so I thought, I'm like, for a second I thought, oh man, maybe this is the game that they released for the Unreal trailer. Yeah. I mean, it's not. That'd but be, oh, it I wish. Looks like oh, it. That game needs oh. to come out. Yeah, like, I That looks so like too. such a good game. I just think they need to do a Tomb Raider in that style. But yeah. um, Tomb Raider has gone more hyper-realistic. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it looks awesome. Um, yeah, I really, really like that. Um, 
the only one out of all of these that I was seriously like, what am I watching is Goodbye Volcano High. I've never How's heard that a of game? it. How is, how, so there's a couple there that I was like, what, how, is this a game? Are they just releasing just like uh, their own TV series? Like, can people Oh, uh, they're I'm, probably trying to do a Cuphead style thing. What's Cuphead? Yeah. Like? You don't know, know what Cuphead man. is? Volcano High. No. Oh, but it's like the hardest game in the world. Still, oh. I think. It's like a hand drawn game. Oh my god, this just looks ugly though. It doesn't even look appealing. I don't know what it is. I wish I knew what it was. There's no that's gameplay to this thing. trailer. It's just. No. Yeah, anime. Actually, we talked about sports games. The 2K21. Oh, perfect. It paused at the perfect time. Um, I'm, I'm impressed by the sweat graphics. See, uh, and they did the same thing that Xbox did, um, where they had the athlete there to do it. Now, obviously, I sound like a guy that has no idea what the fuck sports are mm-hmm. when I just said the athlete to showcase it. But it seems like they did the same thing. See, I'm not sure, though, because like, I was looking at that, too, and I'm like, if that's in game, it looks really good. But mm-hmm. it's also, it looks a bit too cinematic. That's like, is that just a cinematic trailer you're showing? Mm-hmm. And it's just not going to look like that at all in game? Yeah. My guess is it's not because it's impossible for with everything going on, but I bet you it's going to look closer to that. And even if the CGI trailer looks like that, that's still pretty impressive. Yeah. That's one of the ones that was just strictly trailer. Hmm. Like a, a couple of these shots, because I'm just watching these as we go along too to get like refreshed. Like yeah, some yeah. of this looks like it could be in game, but a lot of them, like the close up of the face, like that's clearly cinematic, like where the sweat's dripping down his face. Hmm. see and and that's where like the and next gen thing is really interesting when you talk to a bunch of people because for me it's the sweat the lighting the way the light bounces off things like everything they showed in the unreal trailer that is more next gen i don't care about what the like i I do like how the ps5 looks and we'll get to that later but it has nothing to do with hardware accessories or anything like that i want to see what it actually looks like when you're playing so the ratchet and clank one was great the gran turismo one was great Miles Morales one even was great because you get to see what it looks like, uh, like there. Even if it's not the last re- possible render, but you know, a lot of these games had really good lighting. Even Sockboy, I won't play Sockboy, but the textures that were oh, in that gameplay trailer Boy. were unbelievable. What the fuck is that game called? It was pretty good. Sackboy. Wasn't it li- Sackboy or whatever? Yeah. yeah. Sackboy Big Adventure. The textures alone for me, I was like, that's it. I'm right? surprised like, they did another little Big Planet game. Because it's kind of like, I think it was PS3. It was really big during the PS3 era. Yeah, I think that's one of, like, and it's, from what I understand, and this is me not really paying too much attention, but Sackboy is like one of the top Sony mascots. No, I'd say but he it, is kind of like Sony, like Crash Bandicoot and Sackboy. I'd say are really their biggest mascots. Yeah. Um, looks fun, though. Yeah, like, but I, I I was looking at that one differently than I looked at Ratchet and Clank when I was like, man, the textures and the way things sound, like even Sockboy, or Sackboy, sorry, uh, on the snow, like just that sound of the crunch on the snow sounded really natural and good. See, I just always like games that are set in, like, you're in the world, but your character's super small. I don't know what it is. I just love playing games like that. I just find it so fun. And, you know, Little Big Planet's obviously kind of set in that style, so... If this is good so, and it's like not $80, I'll probably pick it up. So where does Little Devil Inside come in? Because that one is super interesting to me because it is kind of, it. for some reason, it was like, is your character inside the body? Because at one point in the oh, trailer, the old man one, yeah, bomb. I actually liked that a lot too. That one looked interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Vass, what did you think of that one? That one was interesting, yeah. I didn't know what to make of it at first, but it was pretty, pretty good. See, I wasn't sure if he was actually in the old man. Like, mm-hmm. I, I was thinking at the very end, I'm like, is he in the old man? Is that what this is about? But I don't understand, because it seems like he's outside, like, fighting dragons and shit. Fighting but... shit. Yeah. 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 Which, I love the animation. No, I, I a lot it. of people were shitting on it in the Discord I was in, and I was like, no, this looks, like, I like the style a lot. I, like, I felt it was, the only thing I can think of, and you, this is a, this is a office reference, is it just had whimsy. It had. It was a very whimsical and imaginative game that I thought was just really, really nice. And I was like, "Oh, I, I don't know if I'll end up getting to play it, but I would love to just watch mm-hmm. a let's play on it because mm-hmm. it had that again whimsy." Um, Solar Ash. I don't know. That one one. Kind of looks weird, and there wasn't much gameplay except for like the character running for a couple seconds. Right. I'm not really sure what to make of this one. 
Like it looks really yeah, good. Like it looks oh, yeah. like the colors are nice, but yeah, again, it's it's one of those. The whole vibe of it didn't really speak to me. Like it looks good, but it just it wouldn't be my type of game. I probably wouldn't play it myself. Yeah, I don't think. I don't know until I see gameplay, but even then, it doesn't seem like I'd be into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, definitely not for me. But it looks again color color wise and everything like that look good. Um, Hitman, you already mentioned. I've played the Hitman series quite a few times. I'm super excited. I was I was didn't expect that. That was one of the nice surprises. I thought it was like one of the more hype ones because it's like, oh shit, like Hitman's a big franchise, and just the fact that it kind of like when I was watching it, nothing hype was being shown. So it's like, oh, finally, like you know, a game I actually know and not just some random indie that's mm-hmm. basic. Yeah, Vass, have you played the Hitman games at all? Oh, way back when I can't remember the last one I actually played, and I don't think I even played it fully. But yeah. I they played did a, a couple really of good recent job ones, them. but not fully either. Did you ever play that? I-, I wanted to play the one that was on mobile. I did not. I forget what it's called, but I-, I didn't end up playing it. I wanted to, but I was like, I don't feel like playing. I don't I don't feel like paying money for a game right now. Mm-hmm. Um where were we? Hitman was good. Demon Souls I thought was really sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's remastered. Did cool. you guys ever play like the old Demon Souls? Because apparently it no, is remastered. No. Okay. I have to. I, I've, I've been told from a lot of people that I have to. Okay. Um, but same with Dark Souls. I haven't played that. I want to play Sekiro because it's mm-hmm. got that Dark Souls vibe. Like, and most of the games that I like, they're like, oh, it's kind of got a Dark Souls vibe. Like even Last Jedi, they had they were re- relating it to that. And I was like, I really got to get on this fucking Dark Souls, Dark grind. Souls blood Bloodborne style game where it just crushes your soul, but then you actually do get better. I bought all three of the Dark Souls on a one of those sales on Xbox. I have not played them yet, but eventually I'll get into it. I don't think I could play Dark Souls. It just seems like I get too angry. I just end up punching <laughs> a hole in the wall, and just it wouldn't be worth it. I hear. But it, you but... played Cuphead, right? Well, yeah, but Cuphead, even then, like I haven't played it in a while because it made me want to punch a hole in the fucking wall. <laughs> uh, Resident Evil Village. I haven't played any Resident Evil game for years and years and years, but I did like this trailer. Oh, I'm definitely going to be watching Let's Let's Plays, but I will not be touching this fucking game. Mm -hmm. No way. It looks too intense. Well, for me, it's like, it's not even the intensity of it. I just, I'm trying really hard to find ways to get excited about Resident Evil, and for some reason, it's not there. Well, it's just... There's apparently a story to it, like that one guy at the end of the trailer, like Chris or whatever, showed up, and they're like, oh my god, Chris is back, and I'm like, who the fuck is Chris? Like, I know Leon, or Leo, mm. that's literally mm. it. I don't know there's a Chris in the Resident Evil franchise. I think um, Arturo is a good person to talk to about this, because he, I remember last time, actually a while ago, I was talking oh, about yeah, like, Resident Evil. Oh yeah, I think Evil. he was on the live stream, like he said he was a big, like when we actually used to live stream, he said he was a big Resident Evil fan. Yeah. Yeah, so, but, I mean, the trailer looks really cool, like, the, the cinematics on this trailer alone. Oh. And again, these cinematics will be in games, so that's another that thing sucks. to consider. Like, it's good, but it sucks, because if you're playing that game with graphics that look like that, mm. you're gonna die. Oh, man, the old guy in there, like, mm. yeah. Looks he so looked really good. good. I was like, I'm like, this old man looks like an old man, like, he looks yeah. real. Yeah, yeah, no, it's... It's really good. And it's again, and that's that for me is the next gen stuff. Like, I don't think that my PS4, a PS4, would be able to render it to look this good. Like, God of War is up there. Red Dead Redemption 2 is up there in terms of graphics. But a lot of the games aren't able to hit that level too much. And it seems like, from what I got from here, from the trailers my, like that I watched from the showcase, a lot of these games have definitely upped their graphics, all coming down to the way that the lighting and the shadowing and the reflections on things and, and the, the character in relation to the environment and how it moves is just that much better and that much more flawless. And that's where that Ratchet and Clank one was really big because it felt like just a flawless experience without and without the loading screen, without anything. So that's that, that for me is a big big thing for when it comes to considering next gen that loading screen's gonna be massive like just even with gta itself when it comes to the ps5 just not having to wait oh. 40 years to play <laughs> yes oh big time yeah it's gonna be a huge jump um the other one that was that i thought out of all these that was super 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 next gen was pragmatic pragmata and that was a space um, one correct 
that one was the one that started yeah in, on, on earth and then it ended up being in space mm-hmm. but then it looked like there was like a some mirroring going on and i don't know man it looked like death stranding the sequel in a way but it was for me it felt like the most next gen like i'm looking at the trailer her eye mm-hmm. the little girl's eye and everything i was like holy shit well even like the cat the cat was just like all the whole it looked like a next not next gen but like just a futuristic world that they were set in yeah oh yeah it's like i am legend and gravity mixed together yeah i i I, I I think i agree but i haven't seen either of those two movies yet Mm. i think you'd like them i want to see i am legend gravity i want to see but it's not like i don't know if i see it i see it yeah vast you've seen them oh yeah they're good oh yeah so are there any other games you want to cover are we looking to get into the console uh la- yeah for me lastly really it's going to be the fact that i'm excited for a lot of the games that they showed and then horizon zero dawn 2 uh forbidden west i thought was an awesome surprise i was hoping to get just an announcement mm-hmm. i was actually hoping for a few more announcements but then at the same time i'm like you know as long as it's it's got that next gen feel uh spider-man miles morales i'm thinking it's going to be very similar to lost legacy for uncharted That's like a really out. solid 10 15 maybe 20 hour game for mm-hmm. 60 bucks which i'd be really really happy with Especially because that, like, that would have meant that they would have had to go get started on it right away, and it was only two years ago that Spider-Man PS4 came out. Well, Insomniac so, actually just released a tweet because lots of people don't know like what the fuck this game is, and if, if it's just a DLC or if it's a remaster of Spider-Man plus this element. And they said it's a standalone game, whether that means awesome. it is twenty hours or whatever, uh, and it's like a spinoff in the sense. So it's like connecting that universe to another game. So it's not a sequel. But it's like just, uh, it's like Thor and Iron Man, like in the mm-hmm. MCU, which is cool because a game universe for PS5, I'm sorry, Xbox boys, but for PS users, it's going to be pretty fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. <laughs> and I love that it was set in winter. I don't know, mm-hmm. like, and the gameplay is in winter too. I think that would be really cool to see. Um, I don't know if they're going to make that a thing where it's like maybe slippery things or something to do with your webbing or whatever, but I think it's, I think it'll be really cool to see Spider-Man in the winter. Just that um, suit too looks fucking deadly. Oh, so good, so good. I don't know if they're gonna have. I doubt they're gonna have the suit changes. They might. Who knows? But I think they will. But even I'd be good with just that. Me too. I agreed. I think like even if they just had it, it's like this is your suit the whole game. I'm like I'm cool with it. Um, again, and Horizon Zero Dawn. The trailer just popped up right now. I'm so excited for this game. I love that they had it at the very end. I thought it was like, it is the perfect game to have, I think, when I look back on it. It would have been great to see some other games. Like, obviously, if they would have had some Assassin's Creed footage just because I want some, or maybe like a God of War uh, reveal. Mm. But the fact that we got Horizon Zero Dawn 2, not only just that, but some gameplay, holy shit. And it looks amazing. And I think it's going to be so awesome. The Forbidden West, the worlds that are there, seamless underwater, all of that other stuff, I'm yeah, I'm so into it in such a big way. So are there any games uh, that you guys wanted to see that weren't announced? Like, I know God of uh, War you me, just said, yeah. but... Yeah, for me, it would have been just God of War, really. Um, yeah, I think really God of War would have been the one I'd like to see an announcement, but again, mm-hmm. I'm, okay, I'm, I'm totally cool with what I got. Yeah. I think Fast. for me, I was good with just Spider-Man, honestly. Like, I'd like to see some more games, but for me, Spider-Man was the reason I bought the PS4, and it's going to be the reason I probably buy the PS5 at fucking launch now. <laughs> <That's what laughs> yeah. Yeah. Vass? Uh, no, I'm, I didn't really have any expectations. I mean, it would have been nice to see some Assassin's Creed actual game gameplay and stuff like that, like like they did everything else. But I mean, I guess we got a glimpse of something before, so they tried to focus on so many other games. So I guess, sure. But everything was great. I, think, I thought it was an interesting event, and just trailer after trailer so and really the console reveal was kind of you know the last of it right so which takes us to the console Uh what do you guys think of the console i think it's the like that's next gen that is a next gen console it kind of looks like how the xbox 720 was you know leaked to look back in the days of the 360 okay yeah i remember that 
I think it just looks really good. Like a lot of people are shitting on it. I just think the custom variants, like for you know special consoles, are going to look super sick on the PS5. Like there's going to be so much you can do. Uh, Boss Logic has been doing a bunch of. I think he did a Spider-Man one with Miles Morales that looked really sick and just really nice. Mm-hmm. Everything about the console I love. Lots of people dislike it, but for me, I think it looks perfect. The fact that you can display it both standing up and lying down is a big thing for PS4 users, so I like it a lot. So who who are these lots of people that are dissing it? Because I haven't heard a single person that's dissed it. Like, A, I posted a meme on my meme page, and there's like a debate in my comment section right now about how shitty the PS5 looks, and just everywhere online I've kind of looked, it's been either people really like the look or they really fucking hate it. There's not really like, uh, it looks okay. Like, it's just a fucking split. Well, I figured that. Okay, that's different. Like, I thought you like an overwhelming majority that you're finding just seriously dislikes it, which I thought was really strange. I'm like, I don't know. Everyone's super stoked on it. Like it's a, it's, I don't know. I, I'd be surprised if anybody like actually straight up hates it, unless it's just, this isn't, this isn't an Xbox. This isn't a Nintendo. This isn't a PC. So I hate it regardless. Like one of like that type of mentality. Well, I think like even on our, uh, one of our posts yesterday, like there was some guy who was saying it looks like shit. Oh yeah. It reminds me of a Wi-Fi router, which is like a funny joke. Contro- uh, con- somebody said controller shape is stupid do not agree Weird. at all that is the yeah. optimal fucking controller not the stupid playstation fucking uh, no 4 was okay sorry I don't know what I was going on that tangent but that's a- this is a good controller shape it's like the xbox yeah I think it's I think it's a great controller and it, and it matches the console oh, Mass? so nice I think it looked good it reminded me of uh, Alienware uh, the, compu- the computer the uh, computer mm-hmm systems like it looks very similar just with its shape and and the look it's pretty sleek um yeah i don't know it looks good but i definitely see how people could be like okay it's not that great or they really like it it's gonna split people and um yeah i didn't see a picture of it being laid down so i got a i saw one finally that it showed it you can have it like regular how everyone mm-hmm. usually has it and then the vertical i guess so i think so it's good. yeah oh, G, you can go i guess before i ask the next question oh yeah, so I I love it. I think it looks cool. I think it looks like somebody's popping their collar, mm, like yeah. especially the 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 digital one. Like it's got just like when you see the character on the side and the collar is just like perfectly angled and just their eyes are going over it. It has that kind of feel to it. Um, <laughs> I think it'll look dope as hell in the in the dark. Um, I'm pretty oh, sure yeah, they're lights gonna have up too, which is crazy. Like that looks sick. Yeah, and and from what I understand, those are those vents there are gonna help with the heating. A lot of people were saying that, like the way that it waves up yeah. and down. Um, the jury's out on if you actually need the platform for it to be laid horizontally or not. And I think, I think the one do. picture that I saw, what you you don't need it, or maybe it's good to have it because maybe those angles will end up running into each other. Well, I remember, I don't, I don't remember, sorry, but when I posted it on the F word, like our podcast, when it was lying down, it looks like it looks elevated. It looks like it's floating. Yeah. So I think, yeah. but it doesn't make sense either because if you look at it standing up, it looks like there's like a dent where it goes standing up. So mm-hmm. there mm-hmm. might be two things for it, or it just doesn't matter if there's a dent and you can just put it in. Yeah. The way I, the way I see this, what's what's okay. So first of all, yes, I, I love the design. I am in love with the digital only, and I'm amazed that they actually went as far as to design one just for digital only. I thought that was super ballsy of them to do, even though I'm going to get the one with the disc because I'm not ready. But I love the symmetry of the the digital. I think it looks beautiful. And I think the one with the disc, if you just, all you have to do is just pull that top, the very top down part down so the disc is facing upwards, and that's essentially how it's going to look horizontal. But um yeah, I don't know. I, I'm I'm super. Ex- I I really like it. It looks like the the material on the the material on the outside is just cloaking whatever's inside. Mm-hmm. Like there's not a lot of cuts. There's not a lot of edges. There's not anything like that. It's just a nice, perfect sleeve around the the hardware. I'm excited. I would uh I would buy the digital version if Sony followed what steam does and allows you to quote unquote trade in games and get you know credit back for games you return or just trade in Uh, because steam if you buy a game or whatever and you don't like it like within 48 hours you can return and get a full refund or something like that yeah so if they had something like that i'd go digital easily but if they don't there's no way in hell i'm going to buy a game that sucks ass and then just be stuck with it and it's cost 90 dollars like no man's sky 
Right. I'm, I, I played No Man's Sky a bit. I played but it yes, for like 10 I minutes. Yes, I understand what you mean. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know what I think? So I'm looking at the Boss Logic picture you gave me. The black obviously looks amazing. I think oh. it's going to come out in black. I think that's why in the reveal, like in the in the actual event itself, it looked black and you can see the blue and then it opened up into the white console. But I, I felt that that was like a, a cool, subtle teaser as to this is what it looks like black, but this is how it looks like regular. I don't even know because black looks really clean. I love the I love the black. I if they I don't I, I love the way that the white looks, but for me aesthetically, the black matches everything. And that's the thing for white, like white looks nice, but it's it's I, I it's either gonna get messy quickly, like if somebody touches it with dirty fingers or shit, or it just starts getting yellowed out as white things naturally do. Mm-hmm. So I yes. think black just looks cleaner with the blue and the black. It's just GG, but. But that uh, his Miles Morales version looks super. That's super what I was nice. talking about, like for custom. Like it's, he added a custom light too, and if they did that for custom consoles, that would be so nice. I I wouldn't be surprised if that was a thing. Honestly, like I could see them doing something with like greens and oranges. Like Horizon Zero Dawn would be great to have like an Aloy inspired one with a, an orange light. I think mm-hmm. that'd be sweet. Um, yeah, overall, I, I like how next gen is feels. I think you mentioned that mm-hmm. one person on IGN, I forget who it was. They said that for years, it's been how Xbox and PlayStation have tried to like l- kind of look the same, but different, you know, yeah. recently mm-hmm. they just had this like black box that plays the games and everything. And, uh, we want to be super serious gamers so we can try to compete against the, the PC people and, you know, Nintendo's been able just to coast and make these amazing consoles, amazing games, and like a lot of people just love them, right? Yeah. And they mention how PS5 is at the point now, like most people do, especially when you think of, you know, when somebody, let's say, like me, that started, that was around when the very first one came out, and then being super, you know, wanting to fit in and be one of the cool kids when I was like a teenager into my early 20s. And then now at the point where I'm like, I'm going to do my thing, whether people like it or not. And they they use the analogy of PlayStation 5 is that I'm going to do my thing. And whether you guys like it or not, that's cool. I'm in like, I'm going to have the flair. This is who I am. This is everything. And just super confident to make a digital version, make it wavy, make it unique and not have to worry about sticking to the norm and just enjoying being who they are yeah. and, and and it's like i i totally got that and even down to the fact that a lot of the games that they showed were very much and this uh one of the, one of the people in ign mentioned this it very much kind of games for the whole family yeah whereas xbox and playstation really were doing trying to do games for adults to, again to try to beat that pc thing and it's like no like we're gonna make sack boy make it fun we're gonna bring ratchet and clank back we're gonna make these games that are a little bit more colorful more enjoyable and they're for everybody so i felt i felt that when they said it it made a whole lot of sense and that's one of the reasons why i think it's like it's just so good i don't know if any of that made sense to you no it did oh good yeah of course one thing about the design too a lot of people have been shitting on the xbox saying well it's just a box you know it's like nothing special I don't know what it is, but I just think like the Xbox Series X design is just so clean to me. Like just how it's just a black box yep. and it's an Xbox, so it doesn't you know, it's not like, oh, it's a fucking box. That's so stupid. Like why is it a box? It's in the name. I just think it looks so nice. It's my favorite Xbox design. Yeah, I have to agree with you on that one. Like, like it's it, just clean. I, I love it. And I'm a big fan of two thousand one A Space Odyssey, and so it reminds me of the monolith in 2001 a space odyssey even though that one's like much thinner but it's just like this this black like rectangle in the middle of a room with like oh, all yeah. consuming power in it that draws people in and it's just i i pictured that i'm like what if xbox does like just a square and it's just this this black square or whatever and then playstation just does this super thin like eight foot tall just thing that's in the middle of your room uh, if you if anybody's listening and you're googling 2001: A Space Odyssey, there's one scene where your main character is in the uh, is in a room, and the monolith is right at the foot of his bed. And I'm like, that's the PlayStation Five. That's what it would be. And I think it's just so funny to picture. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I think it was IGN. I'm really glad they went this route. Uh, I'm pretty sure IGN released what, sizes of the consoles, like PS5 versus Xbox, and the PS5 is like considerably. Okay. 
larger than the Xbox. Hmm. It yeah, right seems here. that way, and they were talking about it post. today. Yeah, and it's bigger than the PS4. Like, it looks much bigger than the PS4. Make some space on them. Yeah, so, I mean, the, the, the <laughs> other thing, though, yeah, exactly, hey? And I, and I guess one person made a good point. They're like, I'm going to buy it, but at the same time, my PS4 fits the aesthetic of my plays perfectly. And I'm like, yeah, it does for me, too. It's just nice, sleek, you know, because I have the... Um, I have the PS4 Pro, I think, not the 4K one, but whatever. I'm like, yeah, it, it looks beautiful. Like, it fits the aesthetic, right? And this one's going to definitely make a statement that you might have to actually maybe build your area around as opposed to having it fit the area. Yeah. Which I don't know how, you know. But when I look at something like the digital version, that's definitely one I just have standing up. Mm -hmm. Like, no question. I agree. There's just, yeah, it just the way it so looks good. and the way it's just so narrow. It's, I don't think it'd look good lying down. It, you know, it, it, it looks sexy. Yeah. Like it actually, like it looks like if you, like I'm looking at it right now and it looks like, um, you know, when you put your thumbs and you're just about to like just peel back both edges just to unveil like this jewel that's in. Somebody said it looked like a shell crab in mm -hmm. a way. But well, it, be it looks like the horizontal one, like we said. <laughs> Yeah, no kidding, right? <laughs> I'm curious to see what kind of hardware stuff they'd actually add. Do you think they'd add anything? I don't think so. Add in, like, what way? Like, you'd be able to swap anything out. Ooh, I don't know. Because with the PS4, they're, like, they're very bitchy about if you open the PS4 console, your warranty's gone. Like, they seem like they really don't yeah. want you opening the PS4, so I don't know if they'd add. It'd be cool if you could, like, change out the shell and you'd be able to buy different shells for your PS5. Yeah. But I think you just have to yeah. go with skins. Yeah. I don't know. I, I hope... I'm sure they're going to release different colors for this. I just think it looks super, super clean. I just really like it. I hope there's um, a Miles Morales Not as clean as, let's say, the Xbox, but... Honestly, they've done it with the PS4. Why wouldn't they do it with the PS5? Yo, Jesse, you better be holding one of those for Thanks. me. Because I'm going to need that. <laughs> I'm curious as to when those pre-orders are going to start. My guess is now, but okay. So you said that you saw a leak on Amazon that's 500 pounds. Apparently, that isn't correct though. Like, oh and it, thank God. It, like, the, it, they're not going to make it a thousand. I don't know about the leak of 500 pounds, but it definitely doesn't. It, it won't equate to a thousand dollars Canadian. There's no way they're going to do that. Well, it's just like no offense, but it's fuck, I don't care how good the Spider-Man game is. I'm not paying a thousand dollars to play it. Well, I don't uh, yeah. think they're going to do it. I like. It. I don't know. It says five ninety nine British pounds, but it got taken yeah, like, down. Be, and they, they I, haven't. I, I think before, that'd be pretty so. wild. And yeah. also, yeah, they because if I Xbox think, is any. Oh god, sorry. We keep talking about it. you. Go ahead. I'll go after. No, no, no. I, I was just gonna say I don't think they'd risk it because I don't think the Xbox Series X is gonna be even close to that. No. I think Xbox will be like substantially either way, no matter what the price is, I think Xbox will be cheaper than the PS5. And if it is like substantially yeah. cheaper, I don't give a fuck. I will buy the Xbox. Hmm. I would just I would just wait longer to buy the PlayStation and then I would just go spend an exorbitant amount of money on a PS5. I don't know. V like Vass, what would be the top end for you? Top end? Oof. I don't know. Opening day. Oh. If I was to go get an opening day, I mean, we're going to know the price beforehand. Um, at that point, it wouldn't matter. Sure. There's no top end at the point. Do you want the console or do you not want it? So you save and you buy it. Well, I would say opening day, if they said it was eight ninety nine, so with taxes and everything, it'd be like 950 bucks. Is mm -hmm. that top end? Again, it's it's has nothing to do with like, oh, it's too expensive to buy. Do you want the damn console? You're going to buy it. That's that's kind of how I look at it. I don't look at it like, oh, it's too expensive to buy. You gotta wait this out. Now, if everyone, if it got up to a thousand dollars for the console, I think a lot of people would probably hold off, to be honest. But at the same token, there's also the fact of, yeah, I want it. I want the new game for it, and I'll buy it. That's it. Like currently, are there I'll any? I'll probably end up waiting. Yeah. Are there any games that would like make you immediately buy an Xbox over a PS5 if they were to come out with like exclusives? 
Like, I don't know if you care about Halo, but I think there's a new Spider-Man. Halo. Man. I, I liked all the Halos, actually, and I've played... I think I've played most of them. I don't think I've played them all, but uh, they're all good. Like that. Oh, you mean, sorry, Xbox. Yeah. Yeah, Xbox. Um, yeah, it'd be... <clears throat> it'd be a good one to buy. But there's, like, Gears of War is exclusive for them. Halo is exclusive for them. Uh, I can't remember any other ones that really... I think Gears and Halo are really their biggest fucking ones. I think, I think so too. Hori- yeah. Well, not Horizon. The one racing game I'm pretty sure is exclusive to Xbox. Um, Forza. Yeah, Forza. Yeah, Forza. Forza is huge for them. Yeah, but now they offer most of the new Forza games free on the Game Pass. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> if you Game Pass yeah, is a yeah, big the... thing for Xbox too. Oh, it's huge, and I like it's cheaper actually if you do it through your PC because mm-hmm. through the Microsoft app and stuff like that. If you get the Game Pass through that, it's actually cheaper per month on your PC. And you oh. get more or less the same game. Can you use it on your Xbox too? Uh, there's a way to connect them, but there's you I mean you're you're basically you you basically yeah you can go through your Xbox, but you're basically doing a two connection, so you might have some minor delays, and you might not get the full gameplay you want out of it. Mm-hmm. But it's still pretty good. It's not even bad. It's like five bucks for the PC I'm looking at right now. Mm-hmm. They got all like they got all their big blockbuster games. Yeah. I don't know. All right. Well, I th- I don't know. I think that was it. I don't have too much. I'm just super excited for it. I think for me, if in terms of price, if they were going to, I guess Anthony, what would be your top end? Like, would you just hold off if it's like nine hundred bucks? If it's what? Sorry. Nine hundred bucks. Nine hundred, but like I'm gonna start saving from now until then. So realistically, if I can save, you know, a good portion of money and like I have a comfortable amount where it's like, because I'm getting Serb right now, so I have like more money, but I have to give back, you know, most or not most, but like a large sum of that money. So as long as I can save enough where it's like I could spend, you know, uh, over five hundred, like I'd say seven hundred is kind of where I'm comfortable, like going to the highest point, but like. I could just be persuaded by the hype of like wanting to get that new console and new game when the time does come. I yeah. think seven hundred for now is like that's where I'd be comfortable spending for a new console. I honestly think that it's going to be a uh, five ninety nine US, six ninety nine Canadian, and the Xbox will be like a hundred dollars cheaper on both ends. Yeah, I can see the Xbox Series X being like. Four ninety nine and five ninety nine, whereas the PlayStation Five will be five ninety nine and six ninety nine. Um, because I, to investors and everything, those first days super important, super important. So I mean, like, I don't think they're gonna want to risk people just holding off because they've made it too expensive for them to get at the holiday season. Yeah. Um, unless they do it to make sure that because it's gonna be weird. Because then, what if they release like the the pro version two years later, right, and just dropped a thousand dollars on a uh, get warranty and break anyways, that bitch. What am I talking about? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, um, I accidentally stubbed my toe and it broke. Jesse, don't listen to this part of the podcast. Get off right now. Because I'm going to come. Who? Jesse. Oh, yeah. Tell Jesse to start just doing some. I was like, what are you guys going to offer me? Nothing. The show's done in three episodes after <laughs> this one. But can you please put our names down? Just we'll we'll give you. I I would actually like. Because what, I put 70 bucks on some games down. I'd probably go there and just put like 200 bucks. Be like, save it for me for 200. And then it'll oh, just make it easier back then. I'm sure Jesse will let us know when it's alive. He's a G. He always so. tells me about, you know, whatever Dragon Ball shit comes in. So for PS5, yep. I'm assuming he'll be on the lookout for us. Jesse's a beauty. That's he what Jesse beauty. is. Yeah, he is. He's always been one of the beauties that we know. Him, Arturo. Blake for a and- bit. Like for a bit for rappy yep. well all right well that's it that is our uh ps5 take i think we covered a lot of ground gentlemen we this is our first episode in a while that's over an hour and um yeah i don't know it's super exciting i i'm i got super excited i love the event if you do have a chance even just the production value it felt very very cool i don't know if you saw the reveal of it with like the bubbles and stuff but it was a very, very cool way to introduce the console. Mm-hmm. Um, the the way that they did the actual thing, like it made Xbox look like a high school musical, and <laughs> these guys were like Hamilton opening night. 
and it was just and i've never been to hamilton but from what i imagine it's pretty unbelievable but like this was a wonderfully put together event i got super excited about the whole thing i loved how they i loved how they incorporated the indie stuff in between every like all the high-end exclusives i thought that was a nice way to bring some of these games that are a little bit more kid-friendly a little more a little bit more fun and maybe something that you wouldn't think because the ghosts the cyberpunks the all those are going to be coming soon and so i really felt that this was a really cool showcase for games that honestly weren't entirely on my radar until i saw them and now i'm super excited so anyways that was uh that was our take um for the next little bit you can find me on twitter at the f words g email us at the f word podcast at gmail.com i think my voice just cracked there a bit make sure you're following the f word podcast on instagram and the lazy canadian on instagram as well and um yeah on youtube i don't know like i said what's going to happen after these next few episodes but uh we'll see i'm actually looking forward to a little bit of a break but until then i'm g i'm anthony i'm Vass. And we are out.